uh, and introduce Mark Berlin, who's our uh, speaker tonight and our leader and uh, Thanks for, thanks for coming. Uh, Mark, as many of you know, is the, is the uh, FJMC past international president. He was president of FJMC International from uh, 2009 till 2011. And it's a great honor to have him here. And I think we're really lucky to have him as a, uh, you know, part of the seaboard region. He was president of the Addis Israel Men's Club in D.C. three times and uh, got a Lifetime Achievement Award from that club. Then he became president of Seaboard and he held several international positions before becoming the uh, international president. And uh, he's now at Har Shalom in uh, Potomac. No? <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, where are you? B'nai Israel. Oh, B'nai Israel. I'm sorry. Hard to keep track. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, and, uh, you know, I didn't realize until I looked at his credentials that uh, he's really been behind a lot of the innovations in the FJMC. Uh, I believe he developed the Quality Club Award, which he's going to be talking about tonight, uh, which is a big inst uh, major institution in the FJMC, the Advantage newsletter that's going out still, and uh, uh, program fairs, and, you know, he's traveled extensively throughout the country while he was president, and uh, he's really a great resource. So I'm going to turn it over to Mark to... Uh, to lead us in some really useful training tonight. Okay, thanks, Bob. Uh, I oh, want to welcome one, one more point. Wait a second. Sorry. If you have a question for Mark, we're going to take these uh, in the chat. Okay, so at the bottom of the screen, you'll find the chat button, and I will be monitoring the chat for your questions. And Mark will, you know, take breaks at certain period to take the questions which I'll feed to him. Okay. Okay, I want to welcome all of you to this Zoom discussion. Initially, this was going to be part of our Seaboard's uh, retreat that was going to be starting really in just um, a, a few days, a week or so. Um, but after that was canceled, I was asked to if I would give that discussion here. Uh, so there are several sections to this presentation. Uh, and after each section, I'm going to ask if there are any questions. Uh, Bob tells me that we have to stop by 9 o'clock. So uh, if I don't get to your question, I'm going to ask that you email it to me after this is over. And my email is Berlin, B -E -R -L -I -N, dot Potomac, P-O-T-O-M-A-C at gmail.com, berlin.potomac at gmail.com. Um, and if you have questions well, during this, uh, if you will direct them to Bob, not to me, and then he, when the time comes, I'll ask him if there's any questions. And uh, so I'll do my best to respond. Um, before we start, I'm hoping all of you and your family are managing well during uh, this pandemic and that you remain healthy. Uh, and hopefully we'll be together face to face real soon. Uh, now, virtually all of you participating uh, in this session are either a, a president or an officer of your men's club or brotherhood. Uh, back when I became president of my men's club, I wish there had been a comprehensive session like this to help me organize my presidency. So I'm going to provide you with little nuggets that I've picked up over the years. And I hope you have a pen and paper down to jot some of them down. Some of them you won't care about. Some of them might be helpful. Um, now, some of, you, uh, of these your club might already be doing. Uh, and some may not work so well for your, for, uh, in your setting, but I'm confident that you'll find 
the overall discussion very helpful. So, uh, to start, uh, you may not realize it, but by virtue of your becoming Men's Club president, you've become one of the key leaders in your congregation. Uh, as such, people are, are really looking to you to set an example of what should and shouldn't be done. So, like it or not, you have become a Jewish role model within your club and congregation. So, how do you live up to your newfound status? Well, first, I don't want you to feel that you need to be a paragon of virtue. People will realize that you're faking it, but you do need to participate in activities to be an example to others, especially if the men's club is encouraging its members to take part. Therefore, if your club has a project, let's say, to encourage participation in the Daily Minion, you need to be the first one to sign up. Because if you don't, others won't think that it's important. So here are some of the acts of Jewish observance that you should strive to follow. First, know your full Hebrew name. And also be aware that if someone asks for your Hebrew name to give a daily prayer, if you're ill, your name will include your mother's Hebrew name, not your father's. Uh, be familiar with the Torah blessings and be confident when called to the Bema. Uh, if it's been a while since you've done this, uh, there are a lot of MP3 files available on the internet that'll uh, give you the words and tune to practice them. Now, you might be asked at some point to, uh, to, to make motzi, blessing over the bread, or birkat hamazon, the blessing after the meal. Uh, so be comfortable with doing this. Be familiar with tefillin. Even though you may not put on tefillin every day, when you're at the synagogue, remember that you're a Jewish role model and others are looking to you for guidance. So be familiar with its use. And if you don't know how to use it, there's certainly other people in the synagogue who will help you. If you're participating in a men's club or synagogue-sponsored activity, it's important that you observe kashrut, even if you don't normally do that at home or at restaurants. As a member of a conservative congregation, that is simply one of the tenets you need to follow. While you need to insist that all men's club activities recognize kashrut, you should not be sacrimonious about it if some individual members do not observe it. It would be nice if you would attend Shabbat and holiday services as an example to others. One of the major benefits of this attendance is that you'll be able to interact with other men in the congregation who you might not otherwise run across. And that's your entree to tell them about your plans for the men's club and to get them involved. When regional or international FJMC officers are visiting your club, under your congregation, inform your rabbi and maybe the congregational president in advance. Provide them with the names and titles of the visitors and if possible, request an aliyah for them. If they're visiting for Shabbat, depending on what's happening that morning, the rabbi might be willing to give the visitor a few minutes to talk about men's clubs from the Bema. And build up a relationship with the rabbi of the congregation and ask for periodic meetings with him or her to discuss issues. And then there are just some common sense actions you should take as leader of your men's club. Remember that you're president for all the members of the club, which will include men of many different situations. Some will be seniors, others will be relatively young and fathers of religious school kids. Most will be married, but some will be single or widowed or divorced. Some may well be gay. So when you are proposing activities for your club to sponsor, make sure that there is something there for everybody. Keep in mind that your club members are paying dues for the furtherance of the club's activities. So resist using the dues in order to purchase, for instance, food trays for shiva households of men's club leaders. Just imagine if you're a rank and file uh, member who discovers that your dues is being spent for the benefit 
of a few, you might be a little ticked off. So instead, I'm not saying the club shouldn't send something to uh, a Shiva household, but uh, you might wish to ask club members for uh, separate contributions. Now, uh, one of the most important skills you'll learn is that in order to be a successful president, you'll need to delegate authority to others. You can't do everything yourself. But be mindful of the fact that your members have lives and responsibilities outside of the men's club. They have families and jobs and other organizations to which they belong. Don't overburden a few people with lots of responsibilities. And that will also enable you to develop additional leaders by giving a lot of individuals small jobs. And the best way to delegate is to ask. Human nature often shuns volunteering, even when the need is known. But most men and women, when asked to take a small role to help an event succeed, will accept. One benefit which they'll receive, realize is that when working with other men in the congregation, many of whom they may not know very well, they'll be getting to know them better. And here's a tip when you, you're planning to introduce a new activity. How many times have you been at a meeting when the president asks for a volunteer to lead a committee and there's silence? At that point, the president really has no option but to cancel the new activity if no one is willing to chair it. So to eliminate this problem, when you want to introduce a new activity, arrange for a chairman in advance of the meeting. And that way, the board, when you present it, the new idea to them, will feel it's really already starting off on, on a good foot. Uh, during the course of your presidency, there will almost certainly be some controversial issues that will arise in your club and congregation. Before you go out on a limb, be a proponent of one side. Uh, think how this will ha have an impact on the club and congregation. And it might be prudent to let others volunteer their views on both sides before you paint yourself into a corner. And one of the benefits of being an FJMC affiliated club is that you'll be able to ask regional or international officers how other clubs have handled such issues. And always think of ways in which you can promote the men's club by tweaking your programs. For instance, you might transform your men's club Shabbat on a Saturday morning into a men's club week to showcase how the club works for the synagogue all year long. Or you might take the opportunity of an ufruf of an engaged couple to be followed by the rabbi presenting them with the FJMC's booklet on how to have a mezuzah housewarming for their first home together. Or you might simply look for ways to cooperate with the sisterhood, USY, or other synagogue groups to boost their organizations. With the joint program, all of the constituent organizations win by attracting more interest. Uh, being a Jewish role model is one of the most important roles you can assume as a men's club president. By your actions, you'll be encouraging others to modify their behavior and persuading them to, to look at the broader picture of your men's club as an important part of your congregation the FDMC, and the Jewish community as a whole. Any questions on this? Okay, I'm gonna go on. I'm missing a page here, so if you'll Bear with me here. Here it goes. Okay, sorry. Okay, I'm going to talk briefly about the value of affiliating with the FJMC. I'm sure you've been advised over and over in various training sessions on how your FJMC affiliation provides an opportunity 
your club to get new program ideas and new individuals to gain new skills. What I want to talk about here is how affiliation with the FJMC can tangibly help your club, and especially so if you can convince a few it would be in their best interest to attend an FJMC convention uh, or regional retreat. Now, uh, Bob, if you can put up the first attachment. The figures I'm using here are for a seaboard region. And so if you're another re region, your amounts are going to differ. So, Bob, you want to put that up? Okay. So, if you can get two members from your club to attend the convention, the Seaboard region in the past has given a regional subsidy of $700 each. Some regions give more, some give less. For our Seaboard retreat, there is a, a regional subsidy. It's about $120 a person. If you can persuade two other people plus you to go, that's $360. Also, Seaboard Region and several other regions do give a subsidy to clubs, or not a subsidy, a reimbursement to clubs. If they order FJMC books or, or products. Uh, so in Seaboard, the way it works is you order uh, from the FJMC website, and uh, then you present the bill to the, F to the Seaboard treat, uh, treasurer, and they reimburse you for up to $250. Uh, not many clubs take advantage of this, but, uh, but, but it's there. And, um, and I know other regions do this as well. Uh, it does not apply to candles, no. Uh, also for our uh, annual Blue, Blue Yarmulke Award, there's a, a plaque to the honoree, so the region gives that at no cost. Uh, there's also free breakfasts at various events. And whenever there are a club wins torch awards or probably club awards, there are free uh, plaques for that. So if you can persuade people to go to, to a convention and retreat, then you're really getting a value of $2,200 over two years. So as you can see, if, if you... If your club has 100 members, annual FJMC dues is $1,100 or $2,200. So you're really getting all of this for free. You're not, it's not, I mean, you're, you do, are spending money for the dues, but you're getting it back. Uh, so that means the financial benefit to your club and members is greater than your dues. All you need to do is to exert your leadership to get participation in these events. And this doesn't even uh, count all the intangible benefits. Uh, the region order, organizing honoree breakfast for your man of the year honorees, training opportunities at conventions and retreats, uh, development of FJMC programs and books that a single club couldn't put together by itself, exchange of program ideas among clubs, and regional and international mentors to help you become a better Jewish leader. So you can take that down, Bob. So with only modest participation, there is definitely a tangible benefit to affiliation. Now you probably realize that there are men on your men's club board who not only question the value of affiliation with the FJMC and region, but sometimes actively seek to disaffiliate the club. Uh, they're, as far as I'm concerned, they're really penny wise and pound foolish. Uh, and I think you have a lot of uh, things in your arsenal that can, can combat this. You should counter their arguments and support the idea that broader cooperation is beneficial. So, like as you know, today our communities collect paper and bottles for recycling, and we're really making a difference in the environment. But how effective would this be if just each household tried to do something on its own? It just wouldn't happen. Um, the 13 original American colonies were stronger as a single country than 13 separate colonies. And if it were not for organi organizations like Jewish Social Services and other Jewish charities to support Jewish institutions, 
who else would do it? And similarly, being part of the FJMC and region creates a stronger Jewish community and conservative movement. Okay, any questions on this? Okay, I'm going to go on I'm going to talk about effective leadership. You might recall from the book of Exodus that uh, Moses' father, Yitro, observed that Moses was trying to do everything and make all the adjudications while the people waited all day for him to get through all the work. Yitro told Moses that he was going to wear himself and the people out and that he needed to delegate authority, which he did. So too with the men's club. You as president can't do everything. You need others to, sh others to shoulder some of the load. And at the same time, you'll pro be providing them with experience when it becomes their time to lead. You might know the most efficient way of doing something, but you need to give others a chance. Who knows, they may find ways to improve on how to get something done. But remember, you're the president and therefore the person ultimately responsible. So you need to keep tabs on what's being done. If an event is coming closer and it appears the chairman is not working at an appropriate pace, you may need to step in and get him an assistant or give some direct help. I remember several years ago that the chairman of the International FJMC Convention was not doing his job and the president actually fired him. It was a shock to everybody, but the convention had to go on and the work had to be, get, had to be gotten done. One matter that you have to keep in mind, however, is that appointing someone to do a job but giving no guidance or expectations is an invitation to disaster. You don't need to micromanage but you do need to give a reasonable framework of what needs to be accomplished. And if it's a big project, you might even need to include some time guidelines. So you also need to work with the hand you've been dealt. You may see other clubs in the region or the FJMC that are implementing very complex activities that attract hundreds of attendees and make thousands of dollars in fundraising. But if you have a club with fewer than 50 members, only 10 of whom were active at all, you need to set up more modest goals. And you also need to look at the demographic, demographic makeup of your membership. The age of your active members and the extent to which their occupations are time consuming will determine what you can accomplish. So be honest with your situation. Peruse the, the hundreds of activities other men's clubs have developed over years and pick some that'll work for you. You can get many of these ideas from past winners of the FJMC's Torch Awards on the FJMC website, or simply by talking to men from other clubs. Once you've selected some program possibilities, determine whether you have sufficient manpower to pull them off. And you'll also need to determine whether you have the financial ability to accomplish, accomplish them. And there are other considerations. If your idea will utilize the congregation's only social hall on a Sunday morning, and you know that it's always occupied by the religious school, you're going to have to schedule it on a Sunday when there's no school. And it's unadvisable to propose an activity that conflicts with another synagogue activity or is similar, for instance, to a sisterhood project. Now, as I stated earlier, an important part of the delegation of duties is to give others leadership opportunities. It is only through this that you can determine who has the wherewithal to succeed you as president. And this, by the way, should be one of your key duties, to find and train your successor. Remember that emerging leaders may not know the secrets of the congregation on how to get something accomplished, and you will want a seamless transition from you to your successor. You should also make certain that your successor attends 
regional and FDMC functions to get a greater understanding of the organization. And toward the end of your presidency, take your successor to meet others in the congregation so that he can learn who to go to and what and for what. And by that, I mean not only the rabbi and cantor, but also the executive director, the religious school director, and the person to whom articles for the synagogue newsletters must be submitted and also introduce him to the sisterhood president. As the leader of your men's club, you need to be aware of certain congregational goals and do your part to help achieve them. The rabbi, for instance, might want the club to sponsor activities to enhance Jewish observance. The executive director may want your assistance in such basic matters as erecting a sukkah or handing out goodies at Purim. And touching base with regional leaders helps you keep abreast of regional and FJMC activities. To that end, you might be asked to name a club contact uh, for various FJMC and regional activities, such as the dis distribution of yellow candles, uh, the FJMC convention, or putting to, uh, together torture board entries. Some smaller clubs have so few active members and active workers that it is sometimes burdensome to find chairs for all these activities. And it sometimes devolves on the president to get it done. That really isn't desirable. Remember Yitra, you can't do it all. Maybe if you subdivide a larger responsibility among several people, you can get it accomplished just as easily as one person. Now, to be effective at men's club meetings, you need to have a plan and often a chairman, as I said, determined in advance to help implement it. You can't be equivocal about your position. After all, your board members are looking to you to guide them. That doesn't mean, however, that an overwhelming consensus of your members can't persuade you to change your direction. After all, if everyone is opposed to something, it's just not going to succeed just because you like it. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, uh, I want to talk about the Quality Club Award. And as uh, uh, Bob indicated, uh, this was initially my idea. Uh, I was uh, at one point a, uh, a Boy Scout leader. And the Quality Club Award is pat patterned after uh, what the Boy Scouts Quality Unit Award, which is where various Boy Scout troops around the country were asked to do various different things like, like uh, getting new, uh, new scouts or, or doing different activities. And if they succeeded in that, uh, in really very modest uh, requirements, um, they would earn a patch for the boys' uniforms. Of course, we don't have uniforms or patches, but we do give out uh, awards. Uh, and so it's really patterned after that. It is intended to be relatively easy to get that award. Uh, it's, it's supposed to be a, an honor to get it. And you can also uh, brag in all your advertising that uh, you are now an award-winning club, but um, uh, it's not overly difficult to achieve. Um, and so there's really no reason, I don't think, why 100% of men's clubs can't earn the award. Um, so uh, you put that uh, up uh, on quality club. The criteria are divided into mandatory ones and optional. Now, the mandatory criteria represent those air activities that the FJMC considers basic and most important for an affiliated club. While many of the optional requirements are very important, there is a recognition that clubs differ in their composition and in the manner to which they operate. So the optional criteria afford clubs a measure of independence. Uh, there are six mandatory requirements and then 10 of, I believe it's 
18 and 19 optional ones. And please be aware that there are situations where the guidelines of criteria might be waived in certain instances. Um, I, I want to point out, if you don't know already, that the, uh, the deadline for submitting information for quality clubs for this year, the year runs, so the, the activity, from June 1st to May 31st. So we're almost finished with this year. Uh, now you don't have to submit the information until later in July, I think something like July 27th or something. But the new year starts June 1st. So I'm really sort of only going to be talking about the new year. Um, and I'm not going to go through and read every one of these. Uh, because ultimately, uh, everybody who signed up for this is going to get all of these attachments emailed to them. Um, but the mandatory ones, you have to uh, have registered for the worldwide wrap and conducted a wrap. Uh, I should note that it does not have to be on the date when everyone else does it. You can, if it doesn't work for your synagogue, you do it whenever you can. Uh, Number two is distributing uh, FJMC show yellow candles. Uh, this year, most clubs did not distribute the, the candles because they couldn't really get together uh, because of the pandemic. So clubs will have candles left over uh, from this year. So next year, it's not going to be a requirement that you buy new uh, candles, but the requirement next year is going to be that you do distribute them. Uh, you have to have your FJMC dues paid in full by April 15th of 2021. You have to have an updated membership list uh, submitted sometime during that, acti that activity period. And then you have to participate in either a wellness activity or a men's, during men's voices program. And I should mention that a, a really a good, almost obvious uh, hearing men's voices program might be dealing with men's financial uh, wherewithal in, in the recovery. Um, and then also having a, ma a member attending either a regional retreat or training program or the FJMC 2021 International Convention. Now, if you do participate in some future uh, Zoom conference like, like this, it's a training session starting June 1st, that's going to count. So uh, keep track of that. Uh, now I'm going to, under the, uh, the optional requirements, I'm only going to give you the 10 that I think are the easiest for you to, uh, to, to, to follow. Uh, but it may not work for your club. Uh, I think it's going to be relatively easy for you to have a joint program with the sisterhood. Um, I think having a Jewish observance activity, like building the sukkah, or updating the synagogue's uh, collection of kalaisin uh, of, of uh, would be easy to do. Uh, having a community service project, a synagogue service project, like ushering, would be uh, relatively easy to accomplish. Having a men's club shabbat and a father-child activity would also be um, relatively easy. Father Child Activity also would include if you were to give a scholarship to a youth, like let's say to go to Camp or something like that. Uh, <clears throat> also, I think it's relatively easy for, and all clubs probably do it, is to have uh, regular communications with their members, to send in email announcements of your meetings, um, having a budget, and I'm going to talk a bit about a budget later on, uh, and having a calendar of activities. And finally, attending a regional honorary event. I think all the regions have honorary events, and so it's relatively easy to, to attend one of those. Okay, so you can take that down. So it should really be a cornerstone of your tenure as president to encourage your club to earn the quality funding.
And you can advertise, as I said, you can advertise in your synagogue newsletter that you are an award-winning club. Now, on Torch Awards, I'm really not going to touch on this very much. Torch Awards are sort of like the Oscars for clubs, whereas Quality Club Award is not a club competition, competition between clubs. Torch Awards are competition. Uh, and clubs are encouraged to submit applications for awards in different categories in areas as diverse as club programs, FJMC programs, communications, fundraising. Uh, and the awards are announced at the FJMC's biannual convention. But your club can submit the applications at pretty much any time after completion of the activity. And in fact, I would suggest if you were to have uh, a program now and you waited a year until you uh, put together the Torch Award uh, entry, the person might forget what actually was being done. Uh, you may have lost uh, uh, advertising, uh, may misplaced it. So I would say if you have a great activity, put together a torch award entry within two weeks afterwards, and then it'll be fresh in your mind. Also, I should note that clubs that have winning entries are encouraged to present an activity uh, in a booth uh, at the at convention's program fair so that other clubs can profit from the winner's successes. Um, <clears throat> and um, when you appoint to someone as chair of a significant activity, I think you should tell him in advance that he, you may be asking him to submit an entry. Okay, does anybody have any questions about quality club or torture works? Okay, I'm gonna talk now then a bit about relationship with the seaboard region. I realize some of you are not from seaboard, but you have your regions are run very similarly. Uh, so the FJMC is divided into 16 regions to allow clubs that are geographically close to interact with each other more, um, more effectively. Some regions are very small, such as Connecticut Valley, which includes just five or six clubs in the state, uh, and Tri-State, which is essentially the clubs of, of Pittsburgh area and a couple in Western New York. Others are very large with more than 30 clubs, such as Northern New Jersey and Western, the latter of which covers the Western third of the United States. The Seaboard region is one of the strongest regions. And there are currently, I believe, 20 affiliated clubs uh, in Maryland, Virginia, and also uh, we have two in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. By virtue of your being president of your men's club, you will have successfully accomplished one of the most challenging and time-consuming positions in the FJMC organization. And really, you are now uniquely qualified to serve as a regional officer or an active member of one of its committees. In fact, the region is dependent on it. If you're interested in pursuing additional high, highly satisfying work with, your men, with men's fellows, Contact your regional president, or if you're uh, and Bob Watts for our region, or your respective regional president. Why not let all the clubs profit by your success? So let me talk just very briefly about Seaboard's key activities. And as I said, other regions have similar ones. Uh, we have uh, annual Blue Yarmulke Men of the Year events. Uh, this year, we were expected to expand to three separate areas, one in the Norfolk area, one in the Washington area, and one occurred in Baltimore. Uh, each club names um, an honoree who has worked a lot for the club or congregation, and the region presents a plaque uh, to each honoree and distributes leomicus to the attendees. Um, also, Seaboard Region, I think we're now the only region that does this, uh, has created a group of additional honorees 
We are honoring men from seaboard regions past, some who, who are deceased, who have contributed mightily to the FJMC, the region, their clubs, and or their congregations. And we're calling this the Lifetime Achievement Society. Uh, and it does give the region another opportunity to, uh, to sell congratulatory ads. And it brings back in people who have been with the region very actively in the past, but aren't so much anymore. Uh, another activity, as all regions have, is a biannual retreat. Ours was canceled this year. Uh, Seaboard has what's called a represent, which are gatherings of club officers to discuss regional activities and what individual clubs are doing. And then also there's a $250 reimbursement uh, that I mentioned earlier. Um, now, my suggestion, if you have that $250 that you want to spend, don't just go to the, to the FJMC website and buy $250 worth of books and stick them in your synagogue library. That's just, I think, a waste of money. Um, what I would suggest is that if you take that $250, you could purchase 35 copies of a booklet on, on how to put a mezuzah in your home. They're $7 each, and I suggested it earlier, and the, give them all to the rabbi to present to the, uh, to the engaged couple as they come to the synagogue. And it gives the men's club extra uh, uh, advertising. Or you could buy 14 copies of a book on building a successful volunteer culture, written by Rabbi Charles Simon, our previous executive director. Uh, and they're $16.95 each, and you could distribute them to, key, to workers. Um, <clears throat> but be inventive in what you use, them, use that money for. Um, Seaboard and other regions have, have websites to give lots of information and usually an annual or regional meeting. Now, I've put together a list that up. Uh, uh, this is really more for Seaboard people, but um, uh, it's a contacts, uh, key contacts for uh, FJMC offices and for Seaboard. Uh, this is not everybody, but it's the ones that clubs might want to call on most. And as I said, you'll all be getting a copy of this. So you don't Mark, if I can mention, I embellished your list a, a little bit to give all the Seaboard executive officers, because some of them uh, you know, might not be aware, but have had a significant role. I mean, Richard is very active in, you know, he's our secretary, he keeps notes, and he's a kind of the repository for the region uh, of information. And also Keith Myers uh, did a great job at uh, putting together ritual for, um, for the retreat, which never happened. And hopefully, uh, we'll be able to do that for the next retreat, you know, taking over from or being mentored by Ed, Ed Rosenzweig. So, so I wanted people to know who Keith is too, because he might be contacting them at some point. Uh, okay, that's but. great, that's important. Okay, uh, I wanna talk about uh, some tips for a more effective presidency. Um, so first of all, covering the basics. Uh, some clubs have more workers than others, as I said, but there are some basic programmatic areas that do need to be covered. Uh, programming, religious affairs, which usually includes Men's Club Shabbat, community service, communications, membership, and budget and finance. Now, in addition, depending on your club's manpower, that is how many men are willing to volunteer, you might want to appoint chairs or of the following areas. Yellow candle distribution, worldwide wrap, FJMC convention or the seaboard retreat, fundraising, bylaws updating, 
youth activities or some major annual activity that your club has. Now, a few of you had some irons in the fire for speakers for the rest of 2020. But we all need to be cognizant of what a return of the coronavirus might do to shut our synagogues down in the fall and maybe into 2021. So I would suggest that your plans for the next year or so must come with an understanding that you might need to cancel. For that reason, I suggest that you not schedule any activities that will require advanced contracts with non-refundable deposits. Now, if, as many clubs, you are experiencing difficulty in attracting a lot of attendees to your programs, it may well be that they simply aren't the sort or format that appeal to your members or are not well advertised. So here are a few suggestions for programs that uh, might give some added pizzazz. Uh, there was a club in Pittsburgh that had a program it advertised on how to get your pipes clean. And at that Sunday morning program, they invited a plumber to discuss simple home plumbing repairs and a urologist to discuss medical issues that all men are interested in. Uh, you might also have uh, I've heard of a club have a session, how to make money trading in hog belly futures on the stock exchange. Yeah, obviously, uh, not really hog belly futures, but it's catchy, catchy title for a program with an investment advisor. Uh, and in fact, as the country is recovering from the shutdown, having an investment advisor is probably a pretty good idea on your schedule. Um, several clubs organize men's nights out, uh, where men go to a local restaurant for dinner. Uh, you can have one with uh, a group of retired men and another with younger men. My men's club has one, which I started uh, about a year ago, uh, and it's, uh, it's called Romeo's, really old men eating out. Uh, we've got maybe a dozen guys, and it's just a social thing. Uh, you, uh, some of these groups also include movies, golf outings, or poker nights. Uh, and as I said, a couple of clubs in Seaboard already do this. Um, another idea I would suggest is set up a collection drive for used sporting equipment. Um, most men have a lot of this around the house, particularly from their kids who've grown up. Uh, and many of you, and you probably don't know, there is an organization in Silver Spring, Maryland called Leveling the Playing Field that is an organization that collects used equipment and they distribute it to different organizations. Um, you might also have in your club, uh, and it's academic, trivia competition with teams from the Men's Club, Sisterhood, and USY. Uh, synagogues love these joint activities, and the Seaboard Region has, in fact, a buzzer system and a collection of thousands of questions that we've had in the past. But you might find men in your congregation who just love the idea of putting this kind of thing together uh, and acting as moderator. Um, another suggestion is Create a financial dialogue with your uh, about how to provide financial information to your aging parents or your children. For instance, what if I were hit by a bus today? Would my son know what to do? What what doctors I go to? What uh, what my mortgage is? Uh, what my medication is? I created a four-page list, detailed list for him. And so if you had a workshop for that, that would be very beneficial to your members. <clears throat> Another idea is weekend with ABBA. Plan a group overnight outing to a state park with dads and kids. 
it would have to be on a three-day weekend so that you would avoid travel on Shabbat, but it's a really nice way to bond. And then maybe also you might want to have a political forum with candidates uh, in, the, in an upcoming election, or not at election time, just invite uh, your congressman. Uh, <clears throat> now some ideas on running meetings more uh, effectively. First, give advance email notice of meetings with either an agenda or at least the main topics that will be discussed. And it'd be nice to include minutes in the previous meeting. Try to keep the length of the meeting to no more than an hour and a half and tell everybody in advance that that's your goal. Keep discussion moving and don't let it bog down into minutia. If it appears to be headed that way, have, have it go to a committee. When you want some action to be taken before the next meeting, and this is what the FJMC does now, is create an action item that you want this item to remain in the forefront. So the way it works is, let's say that you're planning an activity and at a meeting, the president says, okay, why don't you go um, find out from the city uh, if the park is available for us to use on this particular Sunday. Well, the idea is you create an action item for this person to do that job. And about a week before the next meeting, it is a job of your secretary to call up this guy and say, hey, you know, you have this action item that you have to report back at the next meeting. That way, things don't get lost. Also, have some light refreshments at your meetings. They shouldn't be all or just dry. And before you adjourn a meeting, announce when the next one will be held. Um, a good club president keeps aware of what other leaders in the congregation want in the way of assistance. So you really should have a good rapport with the rabbi, canner, executive director, youth director, education director, synagogue president and sisterhood president. That doesn't mean that your club has to disregard its own goals, uh, just to simply help them, but just be aware of what they, they're interested in. Now, everyone likes to be recognized for the work they've done. Uh, while the FJMC has Yasha Koach certificates to hand out, I really recommend not doing this. I mean, to me, it's sort of a waste. Just handing someone a piece of paper that they, when they get home, they just throw it away. Um, but if somebody has really done a yeoman's job, you might purchase a tree in Israel in his honor, or buy him a book, or simply praise him at uh, a meeting, uh, or an event, or in a synagogue newsletter. And you should always list a series of people in the newsletter who contributed significant efforts, like High Holy Day ushers, or committee chairs of a major program. Now, as I said, really, you are not going to be president of your club forever. And it's important that you identify one or more successors at least midway through your tenure so that you can be trained in all aspects of your club operation. And you may even want to include him in your discussions with synagogue leaders. Right now, if you have not become club president yet, I'm going to give you a few tips on assuming the presidency. One thing in common with all men's clubs is an insatiable need for workers and leaders. And the more active a club is, the more it wants to expand what it does and what it offers. Usually, every two years, a club is in need of a new president because all too few men in the synagogue have a desire and time to contribute to a men's club, the pool of potential leaders is actually quite small. And that's why many men's clubs have to rely on previous presidents to re-up. For those of you who have not yet served as club president, you might think that you don't have what it takes to hold that office. But I'm here to tell you that every man in this Zoom session 
is highly qualified for that job. You just need to take what is being discussed today to heart. <clears throat> if you have not yet served as club president, you've never let you have nevertheless all taken the first steps in this journey. So you're a member of the congregation, you're generally aware of the demographic setup uh, of its needs. Um, you also have probably attended a variety of club activities, even if a, as only a spectator. And you probably pitched in here and there to do some of the many small jobs. Uh, when the club leadership became aware that, you, that you've been somebody who can be relied on, or you've been, uh, you've been given a few more responsibilities, and now you're a club officer. And you probably have an inkling that some are probably looking to you for future leadership. So let's start with uh, the assumption that the nominating committee is currently considering you for the position of president. And they will likely have a meeting with you to discuss your interest, your knowledge of the position, what changes you might make, and how you might handle a particular issue. So I'm going to give you some suggestions on how to approach that meeting. And actually this works not just if you're going to be becoming a club president, but a regional president, and on to the FJMC level. Be familiar with all aspects of the club. Not only its programming, but also its problems, such as finances, lack of attendance at activities, or, or small membership. Have some thoughts in advance on what you might do to meet some of these issues, but be realistic about it and sit down in advance of that meeting and think about the strengths and weaknesses of your club and ways you might improve. This might be a new thrust in your policies, such as youth support or enhanced community service activities, but think about why attendance of programs isn't what it should be and think of a series of activities that might help. After the slate is named, with you as a nominee for president, look at the other men who are active and maybe recruit a few new ones. Talk with a couple of others to come up with responsibilities for them. But, and this was the way it was with me when I became FJMC International President. I looked at it as a giant jigsaw puzzle with some of the, play, the pieces missing. You might see an important position, but no one interested or qualified to hold it. Or on the other hand, you might have two or three men with similar qualifications, but only room with, for one as chairman. Before you assume office, make an appointment to meet at the very least with the rabbi and executive director to get their take on what they think is needed. If you want to change policies or procedures, it's best to do this at the start of your administration. Also, something to accomplish early is a budget. And this is really important and you just can't shoot from the hip on how to spend money. Uh, and so Bob, can you put this up? And so I put together a sample budget. Every club is gonna be wildly different than this. But there have been many times that I've been at a men's club board meeting to discuss a proposed budget and Somebody there says, where is this number? Where is that one that you're talking about? I don't see it. So I am going, to, uh, what I am suggest, suggesting is that you make this a non-issue by directing the treasurer to enumerate the various line items so that they correspond. So for instance, on, on this one here that I have up here, line, Item 1001 is membership dues. 2001 is the expenditure for FJMC dues. Line item 1201 is for programming A of the food purchases and 12, uh, 1202 uh, is for admission fees. And then the corresponding number is twenty 
22, or 1, or 2, or 3. Uh, there's two pages here, Bob. Uh, so you can see that people can look very easily by going from number, similar numbers. And that way, it's much easier for them to follow. But it is important to have a budget that uh, you know where your money's coming from and uh, where it's being spent. So, and then finally, although this probably should be first, you should set up some personal goals for your administration. You can take that off now. Uh, remember that when you create goals, they need to be achievable and also need to be specific. In other words, don't simply wish that you'll have more successful members. Rather, state that your goal is an increase in membership of 10%. Don't simply, simply state that you want more community service activities. Rather, state that you want the club to embark on two new ones. And I would suggest that you advise your goals to your board at your first meeting exactly as, as you propose. So in conclusion, whether you have already served part of your term as club president, uh, are newly elected to that position, or are one of the club's other senior officers, I think I provided you with several suggestions that should make your tenure more successful and will serve you in good stead as you proceed in life to new and greater challenges. And don't forget that your respective region needs men like you to help us help others to make their clubs all that they can be. So we're going to be, as I said, emailing all of these attachments to all of the participants in this meeting. Uh, and um, also, you can, uh, as I said, you can ask any questions. Uh, so thank you very much for your attention and participation. Bob, I don't hear you. Okay, so I had the button on my mic. Uh, thank you very much, Mark, uh, for all the material you've provided. I'll send everybody the uh, documents, uh, hopefully before uh, Yontif, if not right after uh, Shabbat. And, uh, you know, I might add a couple of things that you, uh, you know, embellish a couple of things you said. For example, our club used the uh, book allowance. We took a full advantage of that when I was club president to buy books from the FJMC uh, web store, uh, uh, which were free. I put the, uh, the um, web address in here, fjmc.org slash catalog uh, for the store. And we, used to, we gave those books out as premium. So if somebody signed up, paid like double dues for a super mensch level, we called it, they got a free, they got a book, uh, a free book, which we didn't pay for. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we used that, uh, that allowance. Uh, and um, we also, uh, you know, had some other events, I would hope. You know, as part of this virtual retreat, we we're exploring the idea of having a virtual program fair for for our region a little later on after we uh, get that organized. So, you know, that's one thing you miss by not having a retreat in person uh, where all the clubs get to present their uh, their ideas, but uh, we're thinking of, of doing that. Um, now I'm going to open it up since I didn't get any questions. I'm just going to un I'm going to unmute everybody if people want to raise their just raise their hand hand and and ask a question because we have a little bit of time left. We have ten or fifteen minutes uh, left if anybody has a question uh, that they want to ask in person. They're all muted. Anybody? Mark? No, we're unmuted. I, I, as as a, a newly installed officer, um, 
I'm looking at the situation that we're currently living in where, at least in this part of the country, we can't meet physically. Our shul has been shut down since the beginning of March and probably will be through the remainder of the year. Um, does anyone have ideas for programming that can be done virtually that they think will be engaging? Um, if I can address, we have Todd Heim and Neil uh, Lowentritt from Shari Torah in Gaithersburg, Maryland on ours. I don't know if one of them wants to, uh, wants to unmute themselves and talk about this, but they have had an awesome poker night that they've run several times use it through zoom and this poker software todd do you want to talk about it sure yeah so uh as was mentioned yeah we started with uh every other week doing a virtual poker night our, our attendance we were a small synagogue so um relative to some others about 300 families in synagogue um, so our attendance has been between 20 and 40. It is starting, we've done it now, I think four or five times. So it's, it's starting to decrease, but we're still getting pretty good engagement. Um, you know, we do, it's, it's not expensive. It's like $20 and five out of the 20 goes to the Hesed fund. So, um, it's essentially a $5 donation each time and $15 goes into the pot. Um, you know, it's a mix. A lot of the people that play don't know much about poker, but it, we, what we do is we have the poker going through Poker Stars like as a free tournament. We do the money separately on the side, but the Poker Stars is a free tournament. And then we have a Zoom one just like this. And we actually were able to create it where you can have separate Zoom rooms. So if you have 30 people, you have three tables and you can create three separate Zoom rooms. So each Zoom room, you're getting to talk to just the people at your table. And it, it becomes much more dynamic having a smaller number so everyone can actually talk together. Um, and it, it's been a lot of fun. I've been on every one myself. Um, we're also starting to look at, and I think we did one, although I couldn't make it, Neil, I'm not sure if you made it. We did a trivia night. Um, yeah, so I did that. Of, so, Neil, maybe you can talk about that. But, you know, so we're trying to think of other types of virtual kind of activities, like, you know, maybe do like picture night. You know, what we've been thinking about kind of what can we do each week in terms of a virtual activity. Um, Actually, one question, one idea that we had um, that maybe now is a good time to bring up because, Bob, we were going to reach out to you separately. Um, anyway, is Greg actually had the idea of a, a virtual uh, BMOY, you know, at least until we can have the official, but something that at least the club members can honor our honoree. Um, and, you know, do and, and his family and do something virtually that would kind of be nice and uplifting at this time and, and give different people at Shari Torah the chance to honor someone that's so revered in our community. So we were going to reach out to you about that and get thoughts and, and see if you're planning on presenting the plaque later. Maybe we could kind of borrow it for the ceremony or something like that. Yeah. But that might be an idea for others, too. Certainly. And, in fact, uh, that idea was uh, actually um, – initiated by B'nai Shalom of Olney, and, mm -hmm. uh, and we did it for my club too. Now, of course, it was easy for my club because I have the plaques in my, in my dining room, so I just drove the plaque over to our honoree. But, uh, but we're willing to do that, and I can, you know, if, if uh, clubs want to do a virtual, you know, individual event, I'll get you the plaques. Uh, um. and, and Neil, do you want to talk about the, tri the trivia night? Sure. Um, no, I'd be happy to. But just to go back on the um, the poker, Todd, wasn't there, or I don't know who mentioned it, maybe it was David Fryman, but aren't there some laws in some states that you can't do it? Or is that not? I think, yeah, I think it's New Jersey is the one state where because they have legal gambling, it's not that you can't do it because this is not gambling because we don't do any poker in the site. But states that have legal gambling – they don't allow you to get the free software because they want you to actually gamble. So, um, New Jersey, it's harder to get the free poker stars, but that's us. It, it, um, <laughs> but in Maryland, it's fine. There's nowhere in Seaboard that it's not 
uh, allowed. Um, Mark, did you have a comment? I thought did you uh, have your hand up. Oh, well, I just wanted to mention that at uh, B'nai Israel, uh, they had had or will have a kosher food truck in the parking lot. <laughs> so that's something that can be done. We also, that we did that the other day for Memorial Day, actually, um, as well um, at Cherry Torah. But also, um, the trivia night was one thing that we did, and one of our men's club members actually put together, it's probably like an hour long um, trivia night, and just asked like different questions, and it was kind of family oriented, and it was different categories, and you kind of, you kept an informal score, if you will, and each question was worth a certain amount of points, and I mean, the winner at the end of the night kind of just got bragging rights, if nothing else. Um, so that was kind of fun. They did it like on Jewish history, history, sports, um, like geography. Um, there were a couple other categories as well. And then we probably had, I don't know, upwards of like 20 or 30 families that, um, that participated. And um, the other thing that we have done, and we just did that last week, was a, um, um, well, actually this week too, we did a virtual softball team happy hour on Zoom. And then um, last week we did just a, a men's club happy hour on, um, on Zoom as well. So these things are kind of pretty low key and easy to do and really don't have much you know, planning um, to do either. So they're easy to execute. And I would at this point put in a plug for the FJMC events. There's webinars going on a few times a week, been really fascinating ones. Uh, Rabbi Chuck Simon did a series on uh, David and Sons. <laughs> and her, and uh, uh, there's several other going on. This one is being recorded to be part of that series as well. And, uh, uh, you know, so have a look at the FJMC website, fjmc.org, and you can get a link to the, to the webinars that are being presented at the, at the FJMC, uh, too. And every Friday at five, there's a meeting of the International Kiddish Club online. If you were a member of that, or if you know what that is, you can uh, find out about that through the FJMC site, too. And uh, Stan Greenspan, who's past president, the immediate past president, has been organizing a series of excellent cantors uh, for um, for uh, Friday for the Friday Kabbalah Shabbat service. And I think we most recently had uh, Mark's uh, cantor there, uh, Alyssa. Uh Pomerantz Burrow. She's yeah. fabulous. She was outstanding, and she's the past president of the Cantor's Assembly. I yep. believe. So, uh, so, so there's some really fantastic stuff going on out there. And, you know, you can use that as a hook for your members, too. It shows you that the FJMC is continuing to produce in this time. We're continuing, really, the guys at the top are trying to keep things going. They're, they're putting out a lot of stuff. You're going to see a lot more stuff coming. Uh, we had an executive committee meeting last night where they were talking about different kind of affinity groups there going. And this, these are for all clubs, for all club members and everything. You know, all you have to do is really uh, get your uh, club lists up to date on the, on the site too. But, um, you know, there's, there's uh, tons of stuff going on. You could keep busy every night. Uh, so, the one thing that I would put a plug in for, though, and the reason that we have a hard stop at nine o'clock is that, as many of you might know, that Abba Udaya, our brothers in, in Uganda, are in tough situation right now. I mean, you think you're, uh, you know, you think, you know, we have some tribulations because of the COVID crisis. They're all, lo they're all locked in, out of work. You know, or they can't go to their jobs. I mean, we had a meeting, and there's been a lot of money raised through the 
through the Cantor's Assembly that, to help the large community, all the different Jewish communities there. Seaboard working with the FJMC and um, Mike Rosenberg in uh, Tri-State are making an effort also to help just the Abayudaya Men's Club. And some people on this list, Charles, I see, some other people have made donations already that have gone right to help our brothers and their families in the Abayudaya Men's Club eat. I mean, we had a meeting about distribution of aid, and this shows what situation they're in. All they wanted was cornmeal and beans. That's their staple diet and some soap for hand washing, okay? And they turned down rice because rice is considered a luxury there at this point. So, um, you know, and $50 will feed a family there for a month. So at nine o'clock, the Cantor's Assembly is having a concert. It's a, a rebroadcast of a concert they did a couple of weeks ago that's also being, uh, that's being broadcast on the, Camp, the Cantor's Assembly page on Facebook and also on the FJMC page on Facebook. So if you go look for FJMC HQ page on Facebook, and they're going to be collecting money for the larger community. Now, the Seaboard and More Men's Club focused effort that we're still collecting for is um, um, here. And David Fryman, who's at Shari Torah, has we've already uh, given about $2,500 to the Abayodaya, which divide that, that's, uh, you know, 50 families for a month can eat on that uh, amount of money. So um, if you'd like to uh, to make a donation of that, but go and look at the con at the uh, concert as well at nine o'clock if, if you can. And uh, I'd like to thank Mark. Mark, do you have any closing remarks? Uh, oh, I just want to thank all of you for, uh we're giving a couple hours here and good luck in your, uh, with your clubs. Well, th thanks everybody for attending. If there's any other last comments, uh, please, uh, speak up. Uh, otherwise, uh, stay, in, stay in touch. We're going to keep continue to reach out to you, continue to have meetings for the region. Uh, that I like all the regional presidents and uh, all the club presidents in the region to, to attend to. That's the best way of staying informed of of what we're up to. So look for for emails from from me about what's going on. And uh, Alan, are you on? Hello. Yeah. yeah, I'm here. Alan Budman. Oh, wrong, Alan. <laughs> I see his name, but I don't, uh, I don't hear him. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much for coming and I'll get that material out and I'll be trying to update things on events on the Seaboard website as well. That's seaboardfjmc.org. Okay. Thanks. And uh, be safe, everybody. Thanks. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Bob and Mark. And thanks so much, Mark. It was great, and uh, well, and I'm so glad that we could, uh, you know, do do what we weren't able to do in person. Thanks. And thank you, Mark. You're welcome. My pleasure. Hope everybody's safe. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. <laughs>